All right. Hey, y'all. Um, let's try this. I am Roslyn Brown of Your Wealth Guidance, where we help Black women create their financial independence now and identify the tools for success so you can live life on your own terms. I hope y'all like that. That was something featured from my little nephew. If y'all been in the group for a little while, y'all heard like the nephew stories. Um, so I'm proud of him and his feature. Uh, so today we have a really good Money Monday. And so, so often we talk about kind of where you are, where you are in your career, where you are in your financial life. And um, we've had conversations about pivoting your career. And we were talking in the group just a few days ago about the careers that women often choose and kind of where we stand in terms of the income gap and so forth. And so I would say it's important to know what else is out there because sometimes you just don't know. And so today we have Candace Darian, who is a regional vice president with Nationwide. She is passionate about long-term care planning, building tax advantage retirement, and legacy planning. If y'all know, y'all been in here for a little while, y'all know how I feel about that. Um, she has over 15 years of experience in the financial services industry with a master's of science in management. Currently, she supports a world financial group agents in the mid-Atlantic region, previously managed a successful territory covering financial institutions, wirehouses, brokerage, and independent channels. When she's not working, she's coaching and mentoring and reading personal development books, gardening, and strength training. I can't keep nothing alive, so I'm always happy to <laughs> And we'll also talk a little bit about AWD. I put it in the description. Hopefully, you've had a chance to Google it. If not, I put some um, links in there as well, and just the resources that are available there. Let me turn things over to Candice. Hey, well, well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to everyone joining us. And wherever you're streaming from, uh, my name is Candice Darian. And Rosalind, thank you so much for having me. She spoke so highly of all of you and this community that you have. And it is a community that's interested in other opportunities and possibly some more possibilities. So today I'm going to share with you just my story. It's going to be brief. And then we're going to have a Q&A. I'm also going to just start sharing a screen. I don't want to make this too formal because, you know, goodness gracious, it is evening time. We've already worked a full day, so I don't want to make anything too formal. But I do want to get a couple things out the way. And so as I share the screen, I'm going to do a slideshow for you real quick. There we go. There we go. You see it? Um, and then let's just do this. And really, um, if you have heard or if you are interested in changing careers, tell us a little bit about kind of what's your motivation. Um, if you're in one particular place and you're like, yep, I want to I want to move on. I want to change. Share a little bit of that in the chat with us as well. So oh, I love this presentation. <laughs> I thought you would like it, Rosalind. You know, I had to bring it. You know, you said you, this is a group that's serious. This is a group. <laughs> That's willing to listen and take notes. So I, I can't play around with this PowerPoint. I can't give you the old fashioned <laughs> 1980s PowerPoint, you know, so this is the new and improved Canva PowerPoint. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Thank you, team Canva. Canva. <laughs> team Canva. And so really, I'm going to share with you what my role is. And it's a role that uh, not many people are aware of unless you're in it or you're in the financial industry. So many times when people say, Candace, um, so what do you do? I say, oh, I'm in the financial industry. And I just leave it at that because there is so many things you can think about in a door that is open, that it's almost like Alice in Wonderland. You can go so many places with that. But what you see in front of you on the screen is an internal, external, and kind of territory management. Okay, what does that even mean? And again, this is really brought to you by a, another organization that helped groom me and helps mentor me and keeps me motivated to do the wonderful things that I'm doing for the company that I work for, which is a nationwide financial. It's a division of nationwide insurance. And that organization that I'm part of is the Association for Wholesaling Diversity. And so our agenda today is to talk about how my role manages a territory. What does this all mean? And knowing your role, knowing my role, and understanding what it is to even manage a territory. 
So again, uh, you know, Rosalind gave an introduction about myself. My title itself is called external wholesaler. And I'm an external wholesaler on the life insurance side with a company called Nationwide Financial, right? With Nationwide Insurance. I would say being in this role, I've been here about 15 years now, and I've been afforded so many wonderful and amazing opportunities to meet many people, different nationalities, as well as visit many places. My exposure to what I thought I would experience in the past 15 years, I didn't even have any clue that was out there. So I would say this role has done it. So what you see here is actually my experience of being in Hawaii for 30 days. Now, that's not a regular thing that I do, but it just so happened that the stars, the moon, and even the sky aligned at the same time. And I happened to be there for uh, several conventions and Nationwide helped sponsor me there so that I can meet my clients, which are financial advisors. I've been doing this for so long, but I, I would have been extremely blessed in the part that I've, I've actually won awards and done so many great things. So what is an external wholesaler? I think I've kind of given you a, a little bit of taste and, and enough a teaser where you're like, okay, get to the point, Candace, right? So when I think of an external wholesaler, or even if I tell you or share with you the term internal wholesaler, it is a relationship similar to a nurse and a doctor. So work with me here. I, I'm, I'm always working on my metaphors and, and examples. So just imagine you go visit your doctor and you're in the lobby and you're waiting for them to call you in. Well, someone calls you in and it happens to be a nurse. Well, the nurse takes down your credentials and it, your data and all the things that are wrong with you. And they type them in that computer and they make sure that they fact find as much information as possible. That is what I call my partner at Nationwide, an internal wholesaler. They're kind of like the nurse to the financial system. So when we work with our clients, which is actually financial planners or financial advisors, they have so many products they can bring to you, the end user, and talk about all the things that they do. Like you can talk about you know, mutual funds and annuities and retirement plans stocks, equities, I mean, you name it, any type of element that helps you build money, right, build wealth, or help protect what you have, that financial planner can do that for you. But before that financial planner can do anything, there's these people that kind of walk in their office, they give them a call on the cell phone or the phone, and they say, hey, I am Candace Darian from Nationwide Financial. I believe that you are licensed in this area, and I think there's an opportunity that you can help your clients in the life insurance world. Are you interested in more protection options for your clients? Okay, so how does that work? I just mentioned that nurse story, and then I talked about financial planners, and you're like still probably confused, and that's okay. All right, work with me on this story here. What I'm really saying is that financial advisor has someone in their ear telling them more about the products out there because there's a plentiful, vast variety of things out there they can bring to their clients. In order to do that, they work with sales reps. That's basically what an external, internal wholesaler is. Now, I said there's somebody fact-finding uh, fact, uh, and getting information kind of like that nurse. I would say that external wholesaler is like that doctor. It's the doctor that walks in and says, oh, this is exactly what you need. Here's my recommendation because it's the internal wholesaler that did all the fact finding for the doctor who has the credential, the experience, the expertise, even the background and for, uh, background history of just being doing what they're doing for so long that they're able to say, I think this is the right product for you. So basically an internal wholesaler, an external wholesaler is a salesperson who work for, works for an insurance company and or an investment company. A person in this uh, position develops strategies to increase sales. That is their overall goal. But in order to do that, they have to ask the right questions to provide the right recommendation for the financial planner and also the client, really the right recommendation for the client because every client has goals. Every client is different. So we can't say that one product or one solution or one recommendation works well with everyone. We have to fact find. And I can't do what I do alone as an external wholesaler 
without my partner who's an internal wholesalers. Both roles are extremely important, but it also very, very different. So hopefully that sets a good foundation for you to understanding what the internal external wholesaler role is. And to elaborate just a little bit more, I would say there's some key essentials to being an internal wholesaler um, so you can get promoted as an external wholesaler. I would say my career path has been so unique where I actually met 15 years ago an external wholesaler. And I started off in the business with an insurance company. And I said, you know what? I just really don't like calling on funeral homes and these jewelry stores and these auto dealerships. I mean, this is not my, my realm. I was in central Ohio calling on these types of firms in a very rural area, right? You get what I'm saying is very, very <laughs> rural. Okay. Roslyn got it. All right. Hopefully. You got it. <laughs> and it just, it just didn't, it wasn't the right fit. I was in my uh, uh, late twenties and I just, I couldn't, it just couldn't click for me. And I thought my world was over now that I decided to leave this insurance company. And my friend said, hold up. The financial industry, the insurance industry is so big, Candace. You have a license, you have a life license, and that will take you far. Let me introduce you to a new market. And really, he was my coach, my mentor to show me what the other side of this insurance financial industry looks like. And I developed these skill sets and I started off when I did transition out of my that role with the one company I was with, which was Federated Insurance, located in Minnesota, Owatonna, I used to live there. <laughs> and then I moved to Columbus, Ohio, and I became an internal wholesaler. And as an internal wholesaler, I learned about these, these skill sets. And I want to share with you these skill sets because I don't think they stop at just being an internal or an external wholesaler. I think they are transparent and they can transfer over to any position you're in. So as I'm talking, I know you've already read the screen, so I'll just go through it quickly. You have to take ownership. When you are in this role, there's going to be days where maybe you might not hear from your partner. Maybe they're busy visiting people in person, financial planners in person. That internal wholesaler usually is in a back office role. They're located in home office. They might be more interface over the phone. But sometimes you have to take ownership, right? When something goes good, you take ownership. When something goes bad, you take ownership. So there's been uh, times like, uh, for instance, my internal wholesaler decided to handle a service request on Friday. Well, she told me about the service request today. She didn't want to bother me on Friday. And I said, hey, Mackenzie, you are awfully so sweet. But I learned that that probably should have been addressed or a differently on Friday. But she took ownership. She said, you know what? I could have did this differently. And it's my bad. This is a rookie mistake. It won't happen again. But she took ownership. And together as a team, we move forward. We move forward to make sure that we're delivering the goods and services and, and, and the quality that Nationwide uh, sets forward. There is also, um, you have to be coachable. Number two. You have to be willing to learn. Um, this role is never just uh, reading a job description and you're done at that. There's problem sol solving skill sets. There's going to be an opportunity to um, help and aid with the sale from start to finish. You have to know product knowledge. I mean, it doesn't stop there. But you also have to be in the world of, I, I haven't arrived. I am not perfect. I have uh, my own flaws and there's people out there that have done this well and I need to listen to how they do it. So you have to be coachable. You also have to be an overachiever because we are in sales, right? And I think honestly, and Rosalind will agree too, uh, we are all selling something, right? Whether it is a product, whether right now I'm actually selling myself and giving you just kind of that extra boost of the possibility of the internal external wholesaler world, but we have to be overachievers in that. We have to just know that we can achieve more. And in order to achieve more, you have to be competitive. You have to be committed to a sense of direction. So you have to know what you want. Either you want to do this role or you strive to be in management or you strive to be an external wholesaler. 
but you have to have a sense of direction. You can't do this role really successfully if you don't know where you want to go. And I think that's similar to what we do in life. You want to know the next step of where you want to go, not what people where, where people think you should go, but where you would like to go. Number five, they have a relationship with management, right? And I say this, that the internal wholesaler has a relationship with management, but so does the external wholesaler. These relationships are key because I consider these relationship, relationships center of influence, center of influence. That is a key person. That is a gatekeeper. That is somebody that can let you in the door, that I can help you along the way, that can mentor you, sponsor you, get you in front of the right person to talk about the information. I gave the nurse doctor scenario, but even if you think about it, a pharmaceutical rep and a doctor is very similar to the external financial advisor role where the pharmaceutical rep is going to the doctor's office. They're waiting in the lobby. They're waiting patiently. They know the doctors have a lot of people to see, but they also have to be patient and knowing that when they, when the time is right, they'll get in front of the doctor. Same with the external wholesaler and the financial advisor. There takes time to get in front of the financial advisor, but there's key people along the way that will help you get in front of them. All right. And that is why you have to have a good relationship with management. The last set of, uh, uh, or the last to five, right, that have that skill set. Yeah, they can sell, but not just tell. We always say we don't want to just throw up a product information. We want to really be able to help you implement it. So, and everybody can read per se, right? Everyone can read uh, a pamphlet or a brochure, but how do you apply it? What are some key things you can say to your clients? And that's our goal with, fi with the financial planner. We want to uh, bri uh, broaden their horizons where we're sharing information with them that's a little bit bigger than what they know that piece of paper or that pamphlet says. So we at Nationwide are launching a new uh, solution to one of our Index Universal Life products, right? If you ever heard of that type of contract. And we have a lot of information. I might have like, I don't know, I'm at like 75 things I printed off the internet to read in three days, right? Don't worry, folks, I'll get there. But uh, with that being said, you know, reading all of that information, I just don't want to just spit it out to the, to the advisor. I want to say, this is how you apply it. And here's the full story behind it. Here's the philosophy behind it. Here's the, what makes it sizzle, right? Here's what makes it sizzle. So, and not just telling the information, but show me how to sell it to. So me, show me the things I need to say for the client. You also have to be organized, right? You would think with these roles that you can just get up every morning and just go at it, but not really. There is an action plan that needs to be set forth. There is a territory, right? There is a central region that these folks cover. And I cover the mid-Atlantic region which includes at Nationwide, uh, Maryland, Virginia, uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, West Virginia, and all of these states, that has to be organized. I have to be specific in when I'm going to see these folks, who I'm going to call, why I'm going to call them, what am I going to say, and what am I going to present, right? There's a lot of presenting in, in this uh, fashion as well. And that's why the next one is you have to be a masterful communicator. And I've been blessed where I have uh, had forensic and debate background in my past from high school to college. And it's helped me along the way because, you know, Rosalind can say, hey, Candace, uh, in two months, I need you to speak in front of a, a group of people and, and, and live stream it. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. and then like the day before, she's like, you ready, Candace? I'm like, uh, I guess I'll be ready tomorrow. And then here I am. <laughs> Right. So, you know, you have to be a masterful communicator. And I would say being part of the Association for Wholesaling for Diversity, it is cream of the, the cream. You know, they are the best at the best when it comes to communicating, presenting and holding attention of an audience. It's something powerful that you can do when you're able to communicate as if we're just talking. It's not a room of people, but you and I are talking right? Even via Zoom. The last, uh, 
the last one, or I'm, I'm sorry, the last two, and they're willing to go anywhere. These roles are open, but you have to be willing, one, to travel, and one, if, if necessary, to move, right? Just because we're from Columbus, Ohio, what if that person doesn't want to leave? Like, what if there's an external wholesaler or an internal wholesaler, and they're doing really well? They've been doing this for 15 years, and they're not going anywhere. So you might have an opportunity to move maybe to Florida, maybe to California, maybe to a new market in Arizona, but you have to be flexible. So usually these roles are given to individuals who are just starting off with a family. They might be single, but they are not tied to a certain location, right? And I do a lot of travel. I, at, at some point of time when I started a newer territory back in 2016, I was traveling about three weeks out of the month to get my territory up and running. And now it would say post uh, pandemic, I'm not really traveling as much at, at all. People are now calling me on the phone. I, I don't need to see you, Candace. Just tell me the answer. All right. So that's how this is working because I put in the time to grow the territory and because I really have a passion to win. Right. In order to win, you have to put in the work ethic. And it usually takes about 18 months to grow a territory. So I'm going to skip uh, just real quick. I know you just saw some good stuff, but I just want to go here first. When I say grow a territory, there is some territory management skill sets that is involved with the internal and external wholesaling role. And so we need to know what is our playbook to win this year? We have to understand business planning, segmentation, and really client service strategies. So I'm going to explain some of those uh, concepts briefly. And many of you in the corporate world, you might be used to uh, hearing on the business planning side, mission statement or SWOT analysis or SMART goals. But overall, you need to have a business plan. I can't say I am an entrepreneur, but I do very entrepreneurish stuff, right? I run a territory, I develop a business plan, and I implement and go, right? And I achieve. So I would say with that business plan, I need to have some goals set forth and then make sure I'm meeting those metrics on a monthly basis. I'm also segmentating the territory out that the people in Virginia, the firms that they work for, maybe they're not the same as the folks that work in uh, Philadelphia. Maybe their skills and their needs are different. Maybe the market is different. So I would have to really segment out, fact find to see what the problem or what the need is. So I at Nationwide can provide our products and solutions to those financial advisors. And then last is client service strategies. So just when you're like, okay, this sounds like this role does a lot, right? It doesn't stop there. There is a lot of what we call in the industry, whining and dining, okay? Whining and dining. That means in order to really get to know someone, sometimes you just have to take them out to lunch, have coffee with them, take them out to dinner, and just get them out of their environment where they are just a little bit relaxed. And as we call it, sometimes breaking bread does that. Sometimes just, oh, you know what? I had a rough day. You know, if I was in front of Rosalyn, I would say, Rosalyn, uh, let's go. Let's go get a drink later. And she'd be like, yes, girl, let's do it. Right. <laughs> and that's how we're breaking bread to let uh, to get to know each other just a little bit more on a deeper level, because I say sales. But sales is not really sales without building a relationship. You have to develop a relationship. And even in this community, and I say community that, that we're, we're in right now, um, that Rosalind created for all of us, right? This community is about relationship. It's about trust. And sometimes taking the financial advisor out of their office where the phone's not ringing, their admin's not interrupting, clients are not uh, you know, asking for things, but getting them in an element where they can uh, relax and wusa, but also be able to receive the information that we're sharing, receive the information we're sharing. So we develop marketing campaigns. Uh, we do things um, from what we call lunch and learns, where we might sit down 
and uh, we might give an office uh, uh, cater and lunch. And then as they're eating lunch, we'll present our product to them, right? We'll do a presentation and then we'll go around and see if there's any questions. Or there might be a dine around, or we might get really niche If there's a certain group that loves wine, we might do a wine tasting. If it's a certain group that likes tea, I've done tea tasting. And if it's a group of financial advisors that are female, I've done, uh, we've done, we've, we have actually went to Neiman Marcus and we got bra fittings. I mean, it was just crazy. <laughs> like all these things that are very, very niche but things that bring you out just to have fun and develop trust. So we call those um, client service strategies or marketing campaigns just to get people in a trusting uh, realm with us. And that is the territory management side. I think I said a lot, but I'm going to uh, just open it up for questions to make sure that I've answered a lot of the questions that you may have and, and see where we can go from there. Well, one of the first questions, and especially as people are saying, well, goodness, I might want to change my overall career and where things are going and the trajectory today. What are some of the careers if they're doing it today? So if they are working that kiosk in the middle of the mall, um, <laughs> would this be an option for them? If they are a school teacher, would this be an option? How does someone say, I have the skills to move into this career path? Yeah, and I think it really starts in the internal wholesaling role. role. Um, I think that is the first uh, stepping stone to get out in the external wholesaling uh, world. And so if you're working at a kiosk in the mall, you understand sales, but you understand drive, you have dedication, um, you understand that there's a small window, that you only have 20 seconds to really grab someone's attention, but you can do that probably over the phone as well. That's how much I believe that you can do your job extremely well. So I say that that you can transition into this wholesaling field, but you can do that by becoming an internal wholesaler first, internal wholesaler first. And don't get me wrong. This world is so big for every type of product. There is a wholesaler wholesaling or soliciting that product to a financial advisor. So if you know anything about retirement planning, um, then understand that there is a wholesaler for every product, for every type of asset class. I think that's a really good point to make because oftentimes we see these people kind of going out and they're, you know, selling whatever it is. They're like, oh, I sell insurance, sell annuities, like whatever that might be. Um, but not really understanding that they are not the keeper of all the information. Typically, they have some kind of partners in the back and those yeah. partners are typically wholesalers. And so um, definitely for someone who says, I don't know if I want to be a financial advisor, would this make sense um, for that person that's saying, I have an interest, and especially if you're one of the ladies in the group, you definitely have some type of interest in money management and so forth. If you're like, I have a baseline level of information, maybe they're saying they're not licensed yet or anything like that. Would this still be a good fit for them? I absolutely believe it would be a great fit for them. Because um, if you have to think about it, when they're um, sometimes financial advisors, they never say, yeah, I talked to my external wholesaler, right? We're kind of like behind the curtain, they, you know, or in the closet. They let us out when they want us to come out. And then most of the time they say, get back in there, right? They want to be the ones to say, I brought you this solution. But a lot of times they're calling their team, their team of experts um, about the product because no one person understands a company besides the person who works for the company. And so I, I would say this is still a good opportunity if a financial, um, being a financial planner is not a, the realm you want to go into. Uh, I, I would say that I, I meet with the end client, but I don't meet with the end client. I meet with the financial advisor. I wholesale to them and they meet with the end client. So it's just a different dynamic. Now, you mentioned something about you have set things up. And so I know there's a number of people who are saying, I want to work from home. Is yeah. this a great opportunity where people can say, this is something I can do and allow me to work from home? Yeah. So even though I'm no longer an internal wholesaler and I spoke a lot about the internal wholesaler today, that is why I did that, because that internal wholesaler works in home office and or they could work from home. Right now, because of the pandemic, we have many of our internal wholesalers, they work at home. 
and uh, they do not want to go back. Like this is like where they, this is what they do now. So the opportunity from being remote is there. It's more opportunity to be remote as an internal wholesaler than there is as an external wholesaler, because that external wholesaler is more uh, facing the advisor. They're more out in the field meeting people. Now, one thing I know a lot of people are saying, well, yes, I was interested in financial services. I was interested in being an advisor. But typically, if you reach out and you're kind of entry level, you're commission based. And I'm sure a number of the ladies are saying, I don't know how I feel about being commission based. I don't like that stability. Now, is this typically commission based or salary based? It's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. And but that's what intrigued me. I remember graduating from college. I went to uh, Bowling Green State. University in Ohio, Bowling Green, Ohio, by the way. So it wasn't an HBCU. So for, so for those of you HBC, HBCU loving folks, okay, that wasn't HBCU. You probably already know that. But anyway, I digress. So I will say that that's what intrigued me about it because I said, you know what? I can't lie. I, I, I like to control things. Okay, Rosalind, I like to control things and I can't control people, right? But I can control my work ethic. So even at the age of 26, I said, you know what? I love being able to control what I do and every day that if I put in the work, it will produce lucrative results for me. And that has been kind of tried and true for me because it's allowed me so many financial opportunities and options because I control what I do. If I want to work harder, if I want to earn more money, that's just what I do. I remember one time when I when I first started my career, I said, ah, I think I have some time on my hands. I think I'll, I'll be a waitress. And then I had to slap myself. I really just, I just slapped myself. I slapped myself. Mm -hmm. And I said, what are you doing? You just put in more work here and it will produce the results. Right? So yes, there is um, a little bit of, you know, you could be a little scared that, okay, it's not a hundred percent salary. I would say that with the internal wholesaler, it's heavier salary role than um, than all commission. It's like a slight bonus or a percentage of the products that you sell. Same with the external wholesaler role. It's a very, very, very small salary, but you get a, a little bit larger percentage of the products you sell. Now, um, we'll talk a little bit more about AWD because the founder, Marlon, always says, if somebody isn't making a hundred thousand dollars, they need to talk about being a wholesaler. <laughs> um, and I, I love, I love that kind of thought overall because a lot of these like uh, financial advisors and insurance folks, they be lying. They lying about what they make in. They are living off just straight commissions, <laughs> and oftentimes their starting salary is poverty levels. <laughs> and they are lying to you to get you to buy some product that they don't even know much about. They really um, don't know what we make either. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm and so it's a really good opportunity. <laughs> so in terms of like, what could someone uh, in terms of an opportunity, what would look like maybe two years, three years in? So of course you said it'll typically take about 18 months to kind of build up your clientele, to build up your network and so forth. But what's realistic there? I would say some of the internal wholesalers can make up to $125,000. Um, some of the external wholesalers can make um, over 250000 So we'll leave it at that. So <laughs> I think that's question. enough of information. <laughs> well, I, I think the key there is, do you have to have any advanced degrees? Yeah, so that's what's unique. Um, I'm still trying to find a occupation or career path that you don't necessarily need to have a higher education, um, but you have a license, but you can make this type of money and have this type of freedom. And freedom, I, I would say that, you know, I don't have to clock in nine to five. Actually, I don't work nine to five. I just work, right? I just show my appointments and then Nationwide said, good job, Candace, okay? And then I produced the goal and the production. Good job, Candace, okay? Um, so I, I don't know of another role. So um, I will say that, you know, what was the question, Rosalind? <laughs> <laughs> you need an advanced degree. I mean, so no, many people, you need I'm not making enough. I'm going to go back yeah. to school. 
Yeah. So you don't have to yeah. necessarily go back to school. And that is another thing I didn't want to do. I, I made the option that I would rather have the field experience and then have the option if I wanted to, to go back to school where a lot of my friends said, no, I'm going to go to school right after college and get the master's. And there's nothing wrong with that. But because of that experience, I'm now on a, just a different, uh, you know, career path. And so we do have to have some uh, type of license, whether it is a, 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 a series six license, a security license, an investment license, a life license, a health license. So it just depends on what product you are selling that will um, tell you what type of license you need. But it doesn't necessarily mean you need to have like two degrees to get it. And I think that's key um, because so often people are like, I'm going to go back to school and get another degree. Well, that time that time that you spent getting a whole nother degree, you can actually be so much further in your edge and so much further in your career and actually making some good money. But Candice, you mentioned two big things that a lot of times, especially we're in the midst of the great resignation and people yeah. are like, I don't need this no more. I'm tired of these people calling me all day. Yeah. Um, I'm tired of someone saying I got to come back to work. So one, you mentioned the ability to work from home, mm -hmm. but I really want to highlight the fact that you said you don't clock in and you don't clock out. And you said you drink wine at work. <laughs> yeah, I can. I would have suggested. I, I get tired during like by 11. Oops. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but it is it is a lifestyle. Um, and really one of the reasons, and I hope you all have some time to go over to the WD website, is because this is an industry that is very much not black. Yeah. And um, what it is, is it is the ability to spend money in order to wine and dine. So if you got a, if you are out there and networking your behind off, but you ain't making no money doing it. So if you are going to happy hour anyway, yeah. could you take somebody work related to happy hour? Um, right. If you are going, you know, trying all the new restaurants and so forth. I used to love that because I, um, a number of the people that I worked with, I would say, have you tried the new restaurant? And that is now a work meeting, trying <laughs> trying the new restaurant in town. So those kind of things, who wouldn't want to do that? And then you don't have to worry about clocking in at a certain hour. So if you need to drop your child off at you know, daycare or school at yeah. eight o'clock, you can do that and then get back, get home, log in and kind of do the work day and have that flexibility if you need to do a doctor's appointment, if you you know need to run your mom to the doctor, those kind of things. And I think those things are important because at the end of the day, so many people don't actually get a chance to have that kind of balance in life. And so I think those are some of the big reasons of why people are quitting. They don't have any work-life balance. Right. They can't control their own schedule. They don't feel yeah. like they are empowered um, to make a difference. They can't get the raise that they want. And they want to be able to work from home. And so you really listed like all those kind of, this is why I, I mean, hate that's my what attracted me to the, to the role. I, you know, it be, was working from home, even though I, I was traveling more out in the field, I still, my, I didn't go to home office. There was no home office. I lived in New Jersey. My home office is in Columbus, Ohio. So yeah, I, I was home every night. Um, I got to stay at different hotels, uh, wine and dining, but there's some hard work in there, but there's some flexibility too. Uh, flexibility where I could just call, you know, and check on a bill or uh, go to a doctor's appointment, all those things you mentioned, uh, drop off the kids. And this is the type of, I would say, environment that you will not see many African Americans in. And uh, I would say the Association for Wholesaling Diversity, that is their mantra, is to build awareness of the opportunities out there of how we can get involved. I am the only African American female doing what I'm doing at Nationwide for the past 15 years. <laughs> so, and go, so go hang out with Candace. <laughs> yeah, so I have not seen another African-American female wholesaler, uh, a wholesaling life insurance. And then even in that world, I still see more uh, men, um, Caucasian men, and um, very few women doing what I'm doing. Uh, not saying that there's not African Americans and not saying that there's not uh, females. It's just very, I mean, it's a big country. So they're just scattered and there's not many. There is not many. 
And so and with that came challenges too. It did come yeah. many, 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 many challenges walking into what we call a brokerage house. So I would call on uh, firms like uh, uh, Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo and UBS and PNC Bank and and Joe Smo uh, uh, Financial uh, Company. You know, they are not used to seeing what you're seeing today. And so it took a lot of time to break down those barriers. But I think at the end of the day, um, yeah. you cannot be a successful Black woman and not be used to being the only in the room. Um, so I don't think that's anything that the yeah. ladies are Great. like. That's not that's not a reason to sway away from it, but there is typically a reason that this is a white male dominated field, and it's probably because I think it's the lifestyle that we see on TV. The they're out having you know beer, <laughs> bourbon, <laughs> out playing and golf. And many and it's times hard. I thought I that's what I needed to do. I thought I had to be. It took a minute, right? I had to find my my um, queen in me, right? I thought I had to drink the whiskey, drink the bourbon, uh, golf a lot in order to relate to the men. But no, they have to meet me where I am as well. There's ways that we connect as individuals, but I don't have to do those things all the time. And I don't like doing it. And golf is not my thing. Though I'm looking at my polka dot golf bag right to my right. <laughs> I try. I take golf classes like two years. Um, I'm Probably not for me. <laughs> I'm a nine hole girl, just nine. Hole. <laughs> but I think that is that is one of the things when we think about careers that are the path less traveled, especially for us, because more than likely, if you are a young black girl, you don't know a black woman who is a wholesaler. Heck, you might not know a black man who is a wholesaler and you may not know what they do. And so. I mean, Candace, you're in the insurance realm, but there are people who wholesale just mutual funds. Yeah, mutual funds, retirement plans, um, uh, ETFs, uh, annuities, variable annuities, fixed annuities. Uh, you you name it. If there is a product that that financial advisor is mentioning, there is a wholesaler for it. And so that's the thing. So you don't have to, if you say, I don't want to know everything. I just want to know about whole life insurance or term life insurance, or I just know mutual funds and you don't even have to know all of them because <laughs> yeah. typically even then they're like, I work in large cap and that's it. And you don't have to know today. You have And they're to looking, these companies them. are looking for diverse uh, talent. They're looking for diverse talent. They just don't know, or maybe they don't know where to go or they don't have uh, many that are interested. So again, like we, like Rosalind said, we we have to build awareness because there is so much opportunity. This is uh, this was changed my life. This honestly changed my life. I remember we speak of Chris Rock, but Chris Rock many years ago said, "You know what? You know, money. It, it, we people people think of money as being like the root of all evil, but money just gives us options." And I've been able to provide many options, help my family, retire my mom, things I never thought I could do. Things I never thought I could do. And that's the thing. It's it's so much possibility. And it is what we as women do anyway. We make connections. We find solutions. We connect people with other people to say, yeah. how can I help? If you are doing that today, and in actuality, if you have left the workforce and you are a mom or you are an entrepreneur and you're saying, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. You already have it in you. You already have the skills to say, can I learn something? Can I go a little bit deeper in a certain subject matter? And then can I take that knowledge to educate somebody else to help them on their path? So you're already there. It's just now can you, one, enter in an industry that is not a purely commission based? And I, you know, so many different things people are like, oh, I'm going to be an ex expert. I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start doing that. You can be a living wage W-2 employee. Yes, doing this. Absolutely. I'm a, I'm a, w, a w-2 as well, right? But uh, I'm just heavier on the commission side. The internal wholesaler is heavier on the salary side. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a good thing, that kind of cushion that ordinarily you wouldn't necessarily have in some other industries where you have that ability to kind of be uncapped or have that kind of really, I mean, there are some wholesalers that are making a half million dollars. 
and they don't have a master's degree. Um, so, you know, once you start to hear that, you're like, wait a minute. And really what they have instead are relationships. So they're making a half million dollars and they're spending half their time probably playing golf, eating lunch. Right. And don't <laughs> think breakfast. you have to be, you know, just uh, extremely brilliant to get this job um, there. You'll be surprised. Some of these folks are getting opportunities to get these roles and they are not the brightest in the bunch. <laughs> unfortunately surprising. I won't say, I'll just oh. leave it there. You use your imagination. <laughs> I'm just going to say you are more than capable. I don't care what it is that you do today. If you, um, if you work in fast food, I bet you could. Because if someone comes into your restaurant and they say, what should I have? And you say, what you like? Right. <laughs> if you can match those people, you can be a wholesaler. If um, if you've worked in somebody's doctor's office and you're connecting those patients and getting them scheduled, you could do this. You can, you can manage. If you've been someone's administrative assistant, you probably did more work and you can do less work and make a lot more. Um, so there are so many different roles that those just transferable skills sit out there and assist. Um, so I definitely want you to be aware of that. I dropped the link in there for um, wholesale and diversity. And so what I want to do is take a few more minutes. I know we only got about 10 or so more minutes is to talk about what are the resources that exist. So there's a number of different um, kind of resources and initiatives, um, those kind of things. So what are some of the things that exist today through this organization? So one, can anyone join? Um, and then two, what are some of the resources that are available there as well? Oh, is that a question for me? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so there's a lot of resources available with the Association for Wholesaling Diversity. One, we want to find people that are interested in wholesaling. We are uh, sponsoring a conference that will be uh, June 16th through the 19th at the Western Washington National Harbor in National Harbor, Maryland. It is our sixth annual national conference for wholesaling diversity. But what you'll find there, and I'll put that in the chat box as well. What you'll find at that conference is the first two days, there will be over um, 20 different uh, investment insurance companies there representing, saying that they did their part and looking for the right people because they want to find the right people. And in that process of them looking and finding the right people, they are what? Building a relationship and building trust with you. So, you know, this is where we're letting our hair down. We'll have a cocktail hour. We'll have, a, you know, a dine arounds. We'll have a dinner party. Uh, we will also do some breakout sessions where we'll have those particular companies come in speak to us about like how to be high energy and high performers, but also how to have that work-life balance, how to sell and present ourselves, how to build trust, how to, how to even do presentations. So those are things that are available. I'm putting that in the chat box. If you are interested, definitely reach out. Let them know that you've attended this seminar, that you've heard uh, me speak, that you work with Ms. Rosalind Brown, and we will get you connected. Now, is this conference worth a million dollars? Absolutely. But could it be possibly free for you? Absolutely. We can make things happen. <laughs> we can make it happen. You just got to tell us what you want. You got to tell us what you want. And I, um, I just dropped um, another link in here, and this is the jobs portion of the website. Yeah. So there are so many organizations and I know everybody is listening to this organization, that organization talking about what they're doing for diversity. But there are a number of organizations that are actually like, I'm looking for people. But not only the organizations, there are people like Candace who are hiring people like she got <laughs> yeah. power, like not just. I do. <laughs> she just work I, know you do. I do. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ability to connect you um, within the organization with people who have the ability to say, yes, you. And if you are frustrated, I know I um, was looking in one of the groups and they're like, I'm tired of applying to jobs, probably mm -hmm. because you're just applying and you aren't actually getting to the hiring manager. You aren't using your influence in order to actually get to that next step. So your resume doesn't say that you have all these different things in terms of wholesaling. 
in that case, you need a relationship. You need somebody to get to the front of the line. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate with the organization is, okay, who, who's going to get you to the front of the line? Who's going to get your resume actually read by somebody? Um, and not just simply saying, no, nah, this, this person only ever worked doing this. Right. So since they and only we'll work get you ready. they don't know. <laughs> right. And we'll get you ready too. We don't want to say that, you know, AWD brought this individual to the table and you're not prepped for the right questions. So we want to make sure that you have the type of um, interview uh, skill set available. We want to make sure that you are prepared. So don't think you're walking um, out there alone. Don't just assume on our job board that you can just apply and get the job and say, hey, I'm part of AWD. But no, let us help you make that connection. Like Rosalind said, it, it, nowadays, it is all about who you know. But those relationships happen because somebody took them out of their realm, out of the office, and got to and know them and build that trust. And it may be that you reach out because you're reading one of these job postings and you're saying, I don't know what this means. Um, so I don't know what that means. I don't know what would be a good fit. That's fine. Not mm -hmm. a problem. One, you can come on over to the conference that could be free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so little, one, that's one thing. Your interest. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, especially if you are in the DMV, um, so if you're in the DMV, you know what the DMV is, but for people who are not in the DMV and they like driver's license, no. no. If you are in DC, Maryland, Virginia, you are a cop skip DMV. and a jump away. So you can definitely come on over. If you are further than the DMV, if you are in Philly, New York and all that, take the train on down. Come on, hang out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It will be not just uh, boring information. It will actually be fun. And so I think that's one of the bigger things. But if you are not working today or if you are underworked today or overworked and underpaid today, this would be a great opportunity to say, let me take some time. Let me invest in myself, spend a few hours, network a little bit, shake some hands um, and figure out where can you be guided in your career to one, make some real money, yeah. have some flexibility and have that work life balance that so many people are saying, all right, this is why I'm ready to go because <laughs> I'm not getting what I need. There. What's the one organization that I can honestly say that I've been part of that's not stuffy. It's not, you know, too corporate. It's not too just like structured. The, the people in there are so humble. The the guys, because there, there are a lot of guys there, but there are females too. But everyone just wants you to win because you look like me, right? That is what is key. That no matter what, if you have interest, then let's make sure that we help you get there. And I've, I've appreciated that so much by everyone in the organization because I've met these genuine, I mean, seriously, genuine people, Miss Rosalind Brown. Love that. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, I didn't even say I will be there. Um, so mm -hmm. come on by, see me, hang out. I'll be there. Uh, I would love to see all of you all as well. But yes, I will be there a hop, skip and a jump from from me at least. So that's good. Okay, it's going to come on up. But it is just a great opportunity if you are thinking, if you are wondering, if you are just trying to consider, does it make sense? And I will tell you, this is better than um, some of the other conferences and so forth that exist out there. Because some of them you're going to be like, I don't know nobody. Don't nobody talk to me. This is going to be fit for me. Um, but take this as an opportunity to kind of interview the industry. Um, because it's going to let you know if this is a pivot that you want to make. But one thing that is different from some other pivots that you might make, you don't need to do a thousand different preps. You don't have to pay for a thousand different courses. And Candace did talk about needing a license. But guess what? The a company you don't pay for them. Yeah, well. You don't pay for them. Um, I, I, I have talked about being licensed and so forth before. I got licensed a number of years ago. I won't say how many years. But I, one, I didn't have to pay for them. Not only did I not have to pay for them, yeah. I studied during work. Oh, yeah, so I got yeah, paid yeah. to study. Yeah, I've had many internals. They got their uh, chartered financial planner license. What are you doing? Oh, I'm studying. Oh, okay. <laughs> can you study oh, like at the end of the day so we can make money during the <laughs> beginning of the day? All right. So you are getting, you are furthering your education 
and not paying a dime. Like they, they are not reimbursing you. They're just paying, like show up to a class, here are your books, like whatever that is. So that is a big difference. Um, and so you are just advancing yourself in this process. So definitely if you are on the fence, not sure, definitely reach out to myself. You can reach out to Candice. Um, you can meet us at the conference. Um, and so we definitely hope to see you, but hope that you at least take an opportunity to look and say, am I overworked and underpaid? If you are overworked, that means you're doing more work than you need to be. You can come over here and do the same amount, maybe less, and um, make a lot more. And so I think that's one thing just to think of and be aware of. I know we are right up against the hour. Yeah. Candace, any kind of closing remarks, closing thoughts? Um, find me on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram and all that stuff and Facebook, but I don't post, you know, and I don't know. It's a rule why we don't post, right? I got a security <laughs> license and they watch me. But anyway, but LinkedIn, that's where I'm at. If you ever want to uh, just watch me and what I, some of the things that I post out there, you could follow me there. My name is Candace Darian. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. You could listen to anyone done anything this evening, but you decided to be here tonight. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm so thankful for another opportunity. We've talked about different career pivots. Um, some require you to do X, Y, and Z. Some of them are going to require you to go into somebody's office. Some of them are going to require you to do a boot camp, do a class, get this and get that. No, just, just network. <laughs> just network and understand what your transferable skills are. And these organizations are heavily recruiting um, for black bodies. And we get a chance to really serve our own community by understanding financial products that are in our best interests and aren't the necessarily uh, predatory products that exist out there that we want to sway away from. So one, it helps you strengthen your own knowledge, but also helps you be an advocate for your own community. So I hope that you would give it a shot. The link for the conference is in there. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. got money, go ahead and pay for it. No, no, no. Call us. If you don't. <laughs> call us. If you, if you want to use that money for happy hour, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> that's, that's a possibility too. So you can skip that and save that money for happy hours. So that is a possibility as well. So don't let costs um, stop you from coming to the conference. Definitely come on, enjoy, hang out with us a little bit. So we can't wait to see you then. And so I know we are right up against the time. Check Candace out on LinkedIn and Hi. make sure you subscribe to our channel here and make sure you join us again next Monday. Next Monday is going to be a good little treat. Um, and so next Monday is actually my birthday too. Oh, so it is going to be a birthday to you. <laughs> so I hope you'll be here next Monday. And until then, have a great night. Bye.